Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that works. Oh, ow. So, funny story, I bought a microphone a few weeks ago, but I still don't know how it works. Actually, I bought it more than a few weeks ago, I bought it like a year ago. But the past year especially, I've been very turned off to YouTube and making long-form content again because that's just not the nature of the world anymore. So we're actually outside in Champ de Mars. It's upside down because the Olympics are coming and it's a Saturday afternoon. Yes, 6 p.m. is afternoon to Europeans, 100%, even myself now. Um, people are playing basketball, there's horseback riding, there's people riding bikes, there are people riding bikes, there are people on, on, on a promenade, they're taking a stroll, there's a museum art gallery pop-up thing here too that I've actually never been in. So lots is going on, but I wanted to come outside to film the Eiffel Tower behind me, so then you can feel a little bit you're like in, you're in Paris uh, as we do a little podcast type thing. I am going to do a podcast on my ex-best friend and what happened, fun fact, I bought her this bag the last time I would have seen her, uh, November 2022, for Thanksgiving, and then she just, you know, blocked me, so it's my bag now, which is fine, it's got a zipper, it's a functional bag when I don't want to take a backpack outside. But, you know, so we're in Paris, um, it's getting cloudy again, it was sunny before today. I wanted to do a little podcast-like episode with Eiffel Tower behind me, talking about this TikTok ban and why I actually kind of support this TikTok ban. And it's not for the reasons that many people would actually think. So, for some context, if you don't know me, I'm 25, I am American, obviously, I live in Paris, and I have always loved to create things. I'm an artist, I'm a writer, I sing and I songwrite, I love conceptual conceptualizing any kind of thing that could be turned into something, like a music video. I love cooking. I just, I love, I made Taylor Swift's Midnight's bodysuit. I can put it here on a picture for reference. I just love anything arts and crafts related. That's really my vibe. That's why I love this city. I feel like this is home to artists in so many ways. It's very conducive to the life of an artist uh, in ways that cities like Washington DC and New York, where I'm from more on the East Coast of the US are not. So while there are challenges to living here, I really enjoy living here because of that. So that's the prelude to what I want to talk about, why I do support ban if the US is to do it. So I have done YouTube for a lot of years. In the past couple of years, yeah, the past two years it's been more on and off. I haven't been inspired to make things. I felt very deterred, very suppressed from making things because of events in my personal life that have made me very fearful to make things. But for my like late teens, even early 20s, I was very adamant about YouTube. I was like, YouTube is my way into the world. That's where my personality is going to come through. That's where I'm going to be able to share all my artistic endeavors. That's where I'm going to be able to like make it, you know? And now that I'm 25, it sounds really brutal. I try and think of JK Rowling, who I think was 30 when the first Harry Potter book was published. But the older I get, the more and more I'm realizing that big break is not really coming. I don't because of the way that the world is. And this is my problem with short form content like TikTok, in addition to the mental psyche that it's it's creating and attributing to, especially in younger children, in younger younger teens, like 13, 14, 12, 11, 10 year olds. I bet you five year olds are on TikTok and I don't even know it. But in the past year or so, I've been very active on TikTok, predominantly because I took myself on, off of Instagram completely for personal reasons. Uh, it's almost two years later, I still have a lot of PTSD from Instagram and it's a shame because that was a better platform for me than I think TikTok was and then it's funny because if you asked me a year ago I would have been like TikTok is way better for me than Instagram, Instagram is awful but now I see how treacherous TikTok really is and this is why I support the ban. TikTok you're making content unless your account is private and you only have it for friends whatever you're, you're making stuff that's to be seen by complete strangers and you're allowing yourself, not that you're not with all content you post on the internet or anything you post online or anything you do, you're opening yourself a, an avenue for people to judge you, for people to comment on you, for people to contend your point of view even when it's superfluous to do so. So for instance, I posted this little rant video. If you guys are, have seen me on YouTube, you're familiar. I just talk. Like, I have no script for this. I just have the main points in my head, and I talk. I'm a writer. That's that's what I do. I just stream of consciousness incessantly. But I posted this little rant video on TikTok. It got 130,000 views. I don't know how, but it did. It had a bunch of comments. I'd say like 70 to 75% of them were really positive, agreeing with me. But over the past few weeks, as the video, as the 
traction on the videos die down, I just get a different mean comment every day. Like, I could try and find some of them and put them in this video. One of them was like a six-year-old woman commenting, your 15 minutes of TikTok fame, you're nothing to listen to, chick. Another girl that was the reason, I actually did this today. I turned off the comments for this video today because I just couldn't take it anymore. It was, it, I, I, and I automatically feel so much better. I'm like, I'm done with this. I'm not gonna just let random people who have nothing better to do with their lives bother me anymore. I don't need this. I have lived before without trying to make it with short-term short contact and I'm gonna live again. And actually, ironically, I think that YouTube might be becoming a, a viable platform again because TikTok is so oversaturated and because everyone is trying to make it on a platform like TikTok. I don't think anybody has the patience both ways. The viewers and the creators have the patience for YouTube anymore because the amount of people that are going to sit and listen to a more fully thought out long form piece of content kind of video style like this is sparse by this point. People want to listen to their 90 seconds on TikTok, if that, and keep scrolling. Because I've even done it in myself. I have no patience for anything else anymore. I don't have patience like in other facets of life. I don't have patience for a one hour workout. I don't have patience for, you know, like a two hour recipe. I just, I want to do everything that's easy. And that's because phones have taken over our freaking lives, especially TikTok. So I joined TikTok because I liked the idea that it was mostly videos. Instagram has, oh, even though it's evolved because it copied, you know, Snapchat with stories and Facebook, you know, and everything, and that Instagram has reels now, blah, blah. Instagram was always initially photo-based content, and I, I still, I do stand by this. I think Instagram is more, more of a facade than TikTok. At least people on TikTok are being themselves. They are sharing real stories. Instagram is still this really, for lack of a better word, stupid place you post pictures that you went to Paris and you're like, you're captioning something like, ooh la la, j'adore Paris, you know, something stupid like that. So <laughs> I was just really over that. TikTok has done the same thing. It's also made me feel bad about myself and my life seeing that stuff every single day. I don't, I have the limit set on TikTok, but I just keep getting ignored because when you're alone, I live alone here in the city. I don't have a lot of friends in the city, even after two and a half years. That seems like the only way you can have social interaction, even though that's not a safe form of social interaction, and it's even that it's not social interaction. I'm trying to imagine myself as a 12, 13 year old opening TikTok every single day with someone with their boyfriend or girlfriend or someone with all their girlfriends or someone just, you know, it's always showing, yes, that the grass maybe isn't green on the other side, but TikTok still subscribes to that method of Look at me, look at what I'm doing. I want attention because I want to break through on the internet. And I'm just really tired of living my life like that. But the problem is it's so intertwined in society now. Uh, in November, my favorite artist, one of my favorite artists, Chelsea Cutler, came to Paris. She's American, smaller artist, so she's not gonna do a big tour like the 1975 or Taylor Swift or something. And I almost missed her concert. I almost missed out on meeting her. I met her. She signed my guitar pick, she signed my shirt. I got to hug her, I got to talk with her for a few, couple minutes. I almost missed out on that because I didn't have Instagram. I stopped looking at Instagram completely in 2023. And the one day I decided to look on, I saw that Chelsea posted, oh, I'm coming to Paris. So I caved and I made like a ghost Instagram specifically just to follow artists. And now I feel like I have to do the same thing with TikTok or even YouTubers. They don't post consistently on YouTube anymore. They're putting reels on Instagram and TikTok because they don't want to, why sit down and edit a 20 minute video if no one's going to watch it anyways? That's the mindset now. And I think it's sad. I think, <laughs> I feel like I'm getting old that I can remember a time when it wasn't this bad because it, it wasn't this bad even five years ago, I think. I think 2018, 2019 is when short form content was really kicking off and starting. And I miss the days where long form content was really appreciated and still consumed to the extent that short term content is. Because when you think about it, like probably the average person I don't wanna know, but probably spends at least an hour on something like TikTok or Instagram a day. In that time, you could watch three 20 minute YouTube videos on a really esoteric or niche topic and enjoy it instead of the mindless scroll that you're just what's the word built into mu muscle movements that you have muscle movement for at this at this juncture so why do i support a tiktok fan i think that we've lost control of being able to 
restrain ourselves from looking at something like TikTok. I know myself, I think the only way I would get myself to stop opening it every single day is if I deleted the app. But now they, I think TikTok creates a feel like, oh, if you delete the app, you'll be locked out or some logged out or something like your stuff isn't saved. And that scares me because I have made some stuff on there that I'm like, oh, I, I like this little video or whatever. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose anything that's been on there. And I just, I think, I think society needs help at this point on figuring out a way to, we'll never go completely back. Unfortunately, the phone is going to be forever a part of our species now, even though I don't think that it should be. We need some help to try and regress a little bit backwards. Like for instance, why can't I hear about a concert coming in on email? I would love to get an email that Chelsea Cutler's coming, but no, that's not the first place I'm going to hear it anymore. The first place I'm going to hear it. There are French kids behind me and I have no idea what he just said because it was something slang. We need help to go backwards because at this juncture, we're not going to do it. I lost my train of thought after the French kids were looking at me. Again, like that's, Perfect example. I don't understand what's happened in the world because on YouTube, correct me if I'm wrong, but I really, in my 13 years of watching YouTube, don't ever remember seeing so many hate comments, so many mean comments. And today it's so bad. I don't know what it is because more and more time that we've become accustomed to being behind the screen. This is France. There's a dog over here, just walking over here. You can't see on this side. I don't know what he's doing here. Now you can see him in the camera, maybe. Nope. There, he's walking behind the little white dog. <laughs> Dogs are not on a leash <laughs> over here. But TikTok is just mean comments everywhere. Instagram, mean comments everywhere. And that's something that I appreciate so deeply about YouTube is I, I've always felt like it was a community that you can really foster where people are not going to reprimand you when they don't know you. And we need help to reverse that culture. This is not again, for lack of a better word, this is not sustainable. I don't want to think of 12 year olds 20 years from now thinking that this is the norm of everybody trying to get attention of the most, not, not that I'm talking about myself to make myself seem super silly in any way, but I really think that I have talent with words. I don't know how to get myself out there anymore because it's so different. There was a great on Zach Sang's pod, a podcast with Megan O'Donnelly. They explained it so well that today, in today's world, no one takes a chance on you. You have to post something. For instance, if you're a singer, you have to post something. You have to prove you can get traction and then maybe they'll sign you to a record label. Where someone like Taylor Swift, 20 years ago, she's discovered a Bluebird Cafe and they're like, oh, I'm, this girl's got talent. I'm gonna take a chance on her. It's not like that anymore. So for me, I'm open to so many ways to being discovered, if you will. At this point, I'm more interested in quiet fame. I, when I was 18, if you guys have been following me for a really long time, 18, 16, 17, 18, I was really adamant that I wanted to be a pop star. I really tried to make it. I posted music covers all the time. I tried to get my songs out there. I was even approached by a record label in Nashville and they wanted to do a demo with me, but my mom wouldn't let me because it costed $10,000. I do still wonder what would have happened if I had gotten to do that because I think Again, maybe singing is not my strongest skill and in the same way as Taylor Swift isn't the strongest singer or the most mind-blowing singer. But I think I have a talent with words and I haven't been able to really find an avenue to express that or utilize that to my utmost potential. And it's frustrating because I feel like today I have to post on something like TikTok for people to pay attention to me. I know that by posting this YouTube video, I'm not gonna get that much traction. And look, I know there are gonna be a lot of Americans who are gonna be pissed that I'm saying I'm in support of a TikTok account because it is absurd in its own way. There are reasons why it's absurd in its own way. For instance, yes, it's absurd that a bunch of old white guys can agree on banning TikTok. I think it's 81% of them, but they can't fix gun regulations in the country. That's effed up in its own way, 100%. I, I posted about this on TikTok a few weeks ago. Ever since the Casey shooting, I am just gutted. I think every day, what's it gonna take for something to change? They can't fix gun laws. They can't fix the healthcare. They can't get the abortion stuff together, but they can do TikTok. That is sad. And no, they're not doing it for the right reasons. They're doing it because they're scared China's infiltrating their security or something like that. That's not the right reason to be doing it, but I support an effort in trying to reduce the negative effects of short form content and social media because 
I'm 25 and it affects me, I can't imagine what it's like for 11 and 12 year olds today. Maybe I'm speaking out of my, maybe I'm talking out of my ass. Maybe, maybe 11 and 12 year olds are used to it today, so it doesn't really have an impact on them, but I just think that something needs to change, so. That was a short little video podcast about why I'm in support of a TikTok ban and why I'm really interested to see how this plays out. I really think that we should proceed with it. I think that we need to be more cognizant of the deleterious effects it has on the psyche and the soul and what it does to people. I, I for one, I'm, I'm really done. I'm coming back to YouTube. I'm gonna share my thoughts here. And it's so different. Like if there are mean comments, I don't know, I just, I don't know, I don't know why on TikTok I've always felt, I know it's, you know, back to childhood trauma. Uh, on TikTok, I know I shouldn't engage. I was responding to the comments, but I don't know, something about YouTube just has always felt like more of a safe, slow burn lucrative place to build a community and a following. And I just wish we could go back to that. And I think that a TikTok fan would be the start of that. So I don't know if you agree or disagree. Um, but let me know your thoughts on this TikTok ban in the US in the comments. And again, I want to make super clear, I am not, I understand why people are angry. I understand why influencers are angry. Someone like Amanda Rollins, who's an American living in Paris, she has a TikTok account, I think of a million people. And because she started her TikTok in the account, TikTok account in the US, she would have to delete it and do it all over again. So I understand for people like that, that's, that sucks, that's no good. And I understand it's, absurd that the u.s can pull it together to pass a bill for tiktok but not for gun laws or abortion or any of that kind of stuff so i just want to make it really clear um that i i 100 agree with that point of view i just think that we do need to try and we do need to try and go backwards a little bit you know there's a saying that my friend said that I've always thought of for the past three years. She used to say, old things aren't always good things. That's true, but sometimes they are. And sometimes we're not as progressive as we think with the things that we're doing. So, all right, I could keep talking forever. Let me know your thoughts on the TikTok ban. I'm gonna do a long podcast on my ex-best friend <laughs> and a whole um, episode about friendships and how painful they are and what I learned from it, how it still affects me today. So that'll kind of be the next video I think coming up. But for now, like subscribe and see you back in Paris. Problems in Paris.